Hey everyone, Pauline here. Um, I am super excited to share with you that I will be talking to uh, Nadine Johnson in just a few minutes. We've scheduled her to come in at uh, 1130 in um, PST, so I'm on the coast of Canada, British Columbia, and I thought it'd be really interesting to talk to another artist about how we show up both for ourselves and our lives and our art journey. Nadine is um, a Canadian artist as well. We'll get more information on her uh, and where she is. She's in Alberta and so she's an hour ahead of me and I met Nadine, well I've actually never met her. <laughs> But I came across her, obviously, how many of us do here on Instagram and uh, Facebook, social media, which is an amazing, amazing opportunity for us to connect with other artists and creative people. And um, so I just remember, um, you know, how important it is, or realizing how important it is to um, show up and show your work and this is what we're going to talk about. Um, I have coached artists for a few years now and um, I also have run the intuitive composition course twice this year and also I've got two memberships of artists that I mentor and what I have um, encountered over and over again is just sort of the concern about um, being you sharing who you are, um, sharing what you do, and really enjoying sinking into that truth that you get to be you. You get to be here, you get to do your art. And I thought this would be a really great topic to discuss with another artist because I think we're pretty sensitive beings and this is a really great thing because we see the world differently um, just just being by being creative and being artists and so what's really cool about that is that because we see things differently because we're sensitive we can offer another perspective and this is our gift so I just want to be able to chat more about that with Nadine and um, let me just see if she's ready to pop in. Hi everybody. Oh great, there she is. Let's just take a look at that. Go live. This is going to be so much fun. We've never actually chatted before so we'll get her coming in in a minute here. Um, hi. Hi Pauline. Hi everyone. So hi. great to see you. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for inviting me. I'm oh, excited yeah. to be here. Oh, yes, you bet. Well, I was just warming up the people who happen to be um, watching us now, letting them know that we're going to be chatting about showing up and embracing who you are and also having the courage to show your art. Um, so, everyone, this is Nadine. Now, Nadine, you are an hour ahead of me and you're in, are you in Calgary? Calgary, yep. Yeah, okay. So, Chile. Chilly, chilly over there. <laughs> uh, actually, today's not bad, and yesterday it was cold earlier in the week, but it was it's about minus four now, uh, minus four, minus five, which is pretty good. Oh, for, that for is this, good. Yeah, that for this time good. of year. <laughs> I was hearing minus um, thirty something uh, earlier this week. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was so cold. My poor pup, like she, you know, they can't go out. Their paws get frozen really quickly so it was it's hard on them for sure yeah yeah booties and, for our dog when it gets really cold and he's been wearing a jacket too um Nadine so super happy to have you here thanks for joining me on this I just reached out to Nadine back in September and I just was snowballed with all kinds of stuff so she was really sweet and adjusted her schedule and said whenever so here she is and here I am and Nadine you just finished doing a number of shows um, in your hood do you want to talk a little bit about that maybe you should talk a little bit first about um, yeah let's back up a bit because that's that's exciting but I think I want everyone to know where you came from first and how you got into art and that sort of thing. If you wouldn't mind sharing that, would be great. Sure. Um, 
I, I don't have any formal training or background. I didn't go to university and take art. Uh, my background was in sales, really, um, entrepreneurship. So I worked within family businesses. And then when I married my husband, I also worked with him. And then when I turned about 40, I think, when I stopped working in our family uh, business, my, I didn't really know what I was going to do. And my husband had said, um, why don't you go paint? Because I talked a lot about that. My grandmother was really artistic. I had, well, both grandmothers, and one of them painted. Uh, I had an aunt that painted. Um, so I was sort of, I did that as a child, but I never, you know, explored that as an option as a career. So he suggested to me to go and paint. So I thought, oh, that would be great. I did some research, found an instructor that I wanted to work with, and um, went down to sign up for the class. Uh, and I went, walked into, here in Calgary, there's a number of different studios that you can take classes at if you're on all different levels, of course. So I went in to sign up and I freaked out. I was so intimidated. I, I walked through the building and there was about five classes at that time happening, all different mediums. So watercolor, oils, acrylics, uh, and all different types of art as well. And I left. I, I just thought, I can't do this. Like these people are professional and they're all so good. And I didn't have any experience. So I went home and my husband was like, oh, how'd it go? Did you sign up? And I said, no, like, I can't do this. I, it's not possible. These people are really advanced. This is not where I, you know, I can't take classes there. I, and he just said, this is ridiculous. Like, come on. And he put me in the car. Like he said a little bit more than that. He's like, this is, <laughs> you know, get in the car. And he drove me back and um, he walked around and he talked to all the instructors and I just didn't, I don't think I said a word. And wow. then he went, and, yeah. And he went and signed me up and that's how it started. Wow. What yeah. a gift to have someone more committed than you at the moment because he saw something in you and you yeah. weren't seeing it. Yeah, I was really intimidated and I was, and I'm usually a pretty confident person. Like, I mean, I was in sales for 30 yeah. years, right? But this is different because we know, so, you know, most of the people attending, I think are artists or, or appreciate art in some way. It's a, it's a pretty vulnerable place to be, to do, to, you're exposing a lot of yourself. You're exposing the things that you love, uh, the things that you're connected to, like, that's usually what we bring to our work. Mm -hmm. And even though I wasn't, I had no idea at that time, even how to communicate that I knew it was very, it was very vulnerable. I felt very vulnerable. I felt very intimidated, unsure of myself, um, afraid to like expose or to look silly. I didn't want to look dumb. Right. Well, and this is the thing too, especially as adults, we, you know, once we get, past a certain point that could even be in the teens you're not allowed to not be good at what you're doing yeah. and then as the older you get the harder it is like emotionally and for your ego to deal with starting something new or even um seeing others that are ahead of you on the journey and you're comparing yourself and you you just it just gets it's like as it's um you know, you kind of punch yourself in the face. You, you, you don't even get started and you're already saying like, this isn't this, I can't do this, but you haven't even given yourself a chance. Like yeah. that whole exploration, which I'm a huge advocate of exploring because you learn so much from I exploring agree. and you learn so much about yourself by exploring and that's how you get better. But we don't give ourselves that space because we see others who are doing it and kind of expect that as soon as you pull out the paintbrush, then the, you know, ta-da, I'm Absol here. Absolutely, right? I mean, I, I, I with kids, like with my daughter, I'm always telling her like, just, there's no wrong. So just do it, whatever happens or it, it's, we, we don't have that we don't give ourselves permission to explore and to play and to make errors. Uh, Cause that's where we learn a lot of the great stuff happens when we make mistakes or, you know, all the aha moments come in our work. When we, when we're playing and explore, we find new things that we haven't done before. 
Yeah. That is, it's, it's not something that comes easily to add. And for sure, when I started, that was really difficult for me, right? Um, you want to be good at, you want to be good at it. You want to be perfect at it. And there's no, I don't think there's any perfect in art. No. Of, of, right. In all kinds. It's not just painting. Like, I, I just don't think it, it's the right place for it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. You know, it's interesting. Cause when you're talking about that, I remember I took art in high school, just two semesters because, you know, history and algebra and all those were more important. And then, and so I, I didn't continue, but I do recall in my painting class and they're teaching you what to do, which is not how I work anymore. Uh, but I also remember someone taking the paintbrush out of my hand. It was a student. She took it out of my hand and went to fix my painting, which to me was like, <gasps> how dare you touch my thing? Like you wouldn't do that if I was writing in my journal to take my pencil out and correct what I was writing or yeah. thought process. And um, it's a really precious journey. It, and, and what's interesting about it too, you know, tell me what you think about this, but um, you know, the whole thing about creating a painting, which we do do, we get that from exploring, even if it's just exploring what we think we know about color or shape or what have you, right? And the thing about getting a painting out of ourselves, because you can get a painting out, that's the target, but it's not really the target, but you get it, but you don't. It, you know, for me anyway, it's not the thing that I want to be chasing. I don't be chasing my ideas and I love playing with material and seeing what I create and, and how do I pivot. And I just love that whole thing. But I do find that, and I hear this a lot, that artists need to be reminded not to chase the painting, but to go after what it is that they're curious about and what have you. And the, the teaching part from when I went to high school as well. I did um, a few years in an art program in Vancouver. Um, I don't, yeah, I guess that was there too. It's not like how um, we've experienced now about exploring and following your curiosity yeah. and all that, which is so rich, right? Like what's your thought on that? I think we're, I think we're really lucky because this is a different time. I think there's so many uh, options out there and there's so much access for artists now to really go so that you're not in a class somewhere where someone wants you to either paint like them or they want to show you how to paint or to be an artist or whatever craft or, or whatever it is that you're exploring. I, I agree completely. I, if there's pressure for me, um, deadlines, to produce, um, it can, I try not to let it affect my work because then you're chasing the painting. It's, there's a end goal, right? Yeah. When it's all about exploring and just um, reacting or intuitively working with what's on happening on the surface, that's where the best stuff happens. I mean, yeah. I, the series that I just finished for this show that I did that we'll get to after, um, there were a lot of really wonderful things that happened. And I have a piece hanging on my wall. And it's interesting because my daughter came over and, you know, not everyone likes the same kinds of things or the same, they don't react to the same colors or the same marks. Um, and it, there's just something when you love what, when you have a piece that comes together for all kinds of, it could be the layers or the collage or the color or the lines all those things that excite you, it's exciting for other people. And I find that all the time, right? So it isn't about the end result for me. Like you said, I think it's more about my experience. So when I'm, when, when, when I'm exploring those things and they happen and I'm excited about it, it comes out in my work. Yeah. And then, that's, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. And, right. and then, oh, yeah. So Really great stuff that I've seen some of your videos when you're doing collage. Wow. It's really so fun. fun. Now tell, <laughs> tell us about that a little bit. And then if that leads into some of your work and your shows, tell us about that too. We'd love to hear. With the collage? Yeah. And also, you know, did you bring any of that into the work that ended up, um, that you ended up showing in this, um, this autumn, I think it was, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, it's interesting because I, 
well, I, I've painted in all mediums. So I, I painted in oils and I painted in, a, in watercolor, which I love. I love them all. Uh, but acrylic sort of is my, it's my language. It's, it just, it sort of naturally comes. Like I, I, it's the one thing that I found that when I'm working, I don't think about it. It's just sort oh, of an okay. extension of me, who I am, right? And collage, I love paper. It's, it's just a thing. I love books. I love journals. I love anything that ha is paper. And wow. yeah, I do. I love it. I, I love to journal. Um, I would love to write. I just need more time. Um, so when I was expo like uh, introduced to collage, like adding collage into my work, it, it was a complete game changer for me. It, it was like this explosion of opportunity and ideas and, it changed for me and it, and I know it's different for everyone, of course, but when I'm working and I'm adding layers or I'm adding collage and it can be anything I make my own papers or I use, uh, I have people give me books. Like I had a friend gave me old encyclopedias, um, which are really interesting because you get, I mean, I have encyclopedias from how they must be from the fifties, right? Yeah. So you get all, all kinds of interesting papers or you know you get faces and it's in, and the, drawings they used to right? draw <laughs> I know and and the information is so dated but it's so interesting so I love having that in my work because I just think it's it creates this interest it's like you have these hidden messages all over your your paintings and so part of your history too which is yeah. kind of cool right yeah, so I, for me, collage, and and sometimes too, if I'm working on a piece, I'll get to a point where I'm just not sure. I know it needs something. And usually when I add a collage, like a piece somewhere in it, it it adds that much of a juxtaposition that it it starts to become exciting again. So it just pushes it more. Sometimes you can do that with like glazes and different layers of paint and things like that. But collage is almost like a 3D effect a little bit. Like it just adds that. I would rather use collage than sort of a medium, like a like a gel paste or something. I would, ra I prefer the paper just because it's well, what it's, I love. And yeah, and it's also very immediate. So if you put it somewhere and you think, oh, you can quickly move it. Whereas if it was, you know, wet, then yeah. you other issues. So you get that kind of ability to explore ideas. Yeah. Colors and values and all that sort of thing or texture and you get to move it around. And I, I agree. And I don't use collage that much, but I remember um, a year or two having a real hard time with a painting. And I was just like, I just, I don't know what to do. I ended up just collaging pieces of paper that I had painted on to clean my brush off. And I used them to insert shapes into, all I did was I, I ripped the sheet up, dipped it in water and stuck it on my painting to see, do I need a big shape here? Or do I need something darker light? And it was just like, oh my God, <laughs> like it's already transforming. And that was shifting my mind, which then all you actually want is a little bit of fireworks to shake things up again, right? At least for me anyway, that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think it's exactly, it, and that's what happens, right? And it's, and it, people do that sometimes with a brush stroke or a mark or something else. But, and so yeah, collage for me is exactly that. You know, okay. and yeah, you, you can move it, which is nice, yeah. right? They you can kind of put, yeah. <laughs> you can play and around a little bit. You're learning, right? Like if you're not sure of things, then you can try painting uh, sheets of paper and cutting out shapes or cutting out, uh, ripping them out and placing them on your painting. And you guys, if you're using acrylic, like if you dip it in water and you're working on the wall, you can stick it right on and step back and it looks like it's part of the painting you know, given that the color is working with your palette of the painting, but it's a great way to explore shape and color value um, in your painting without even lifting a paintbrush. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes, and texture too. So depending on the kind of paper you're using, um, like if it's out of a book, like an old, I recycle books. So I don't, yeah, I don't tear apart good books that are being abused, but I do recycle books. So you know, just the words alone add almost a texture to the surface. So yeah. you can do that. Um, 
if you are using tools and making paper, that adds texture that's completely separate from what's on your painting. So as you know, because you, it's like when you take a different tool, it, it leaves a different mark. Yeah. But when you do it on collage, it's like this foreign object on your painting, but it's so interesting. It's, yeah. it's wonderful, right? Yeah. So yeah, I love collage. I use it almost in all my work now. That's fantastic. Yeah. I think I use it when I'm sort of standing <laughs> there going, what, what? And then I kind of look around and I got this stack of paper that I've been yeah. accumulating, cleaning my brushes off or trying things out. And it's like, try collage, you know, and I'll even on uh, sheets of paper, deli sheets of paper, yeah. play around with my lines and then I can rip those and stick them on as well. So that's a lot of fun too. And it gives people ideas um, for those who are listening, just lots of ways to explore without having to, um, you know, get all, squeeze all your paints out if you don't have a lot of time. Right. Absolutely. Um, and there, you know, there's another artist that I talked to um, Connie Gertz, if there's probably people here that know who she is and an interesting thing she does um, which I hope she doesn't mind me sharing. I'm sure she wouldn't because it's part of what makes her work so interesting and which I was really excited about because I thought it's a brilliant idea. So she, she writes about her piece before she paints it. So she, oh, wow. so she writes, she kind of journals what she's going to do and the work that she's working on. So, and if, for, for example, we talked about sort of how we approach our work. It's not sort of the end, but we could write about what our, um, processes or the things that are exciting us or maybe colors that we want to use and why we're going to the whole it could be just anything and then she collages those into her piece oh, so th nice. right so there's there's more history so then you've got this this whole idea that you've already create or built and imagined and then you put it into your work and it becomes a part of that I love that. I love that. And it's actually a beautiful layer of intention as well. I mean, I'm sure you can let it go if it's not going the way you were imagining, but yep. still it's a beautiful way of layering intention, bringing some clarity of feeling to your work. And it's nice that it's in there. I love that. Yeah, What's your me name? Connie Gertz. Connie so, Gertz. Love yeah. your idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, I know me too. I was like, that is brilliant because it's just, uh, and for me, it, it's the collage, the paper, the everything and the writing and the words. Um, mm -hmm. I write a lot into on my surfaces. So I, I do do that. You know, I, um, pencil crayons are one of my favorite tools. So oh, yeah. I, I use them a lot. Right. And so I'll write words and I always put, I usually put the initials of all of my kids and my family members and they're always in there too. So yeah. yeah so I've seen artists write, you know, just to activate their canvas, write uh, things on it or what have you. And I've done that a little, but I find, well, I have found, so new intention, put yeah. that on and let it go as well. But I have found <laughs> sometimes when I write something, it's almost like, oh, um, okay, okay, so save that. Or, you know, it kind of can get me in a little bit of... Um, a block state, a preciousness, but you know what? I always get rid of it in the end anyway. Like, I mean, don't get rid of it, but it's like, you got to let it go. Like we can't do this painting around the nice swoop of the F. <laughs> Absolutely. Know? And most of it gets covered up. Uh, yeah. And then if it needs something, it, it, you know, like it's, I end up covering up a lot of it too, you know, and then I might bring something back, but yeah, most of it gets covered up and it depends on what layers, what stage you're working at. Right. Yeah. So if it's, if it's closer to an end stage and it's just a mark or if it's just a letter or something that sometimes will stay often will stay. You know, it's occurred to me that this collaging and writing um, and bringing it into your painting and painting over it and adding more is really like our lives as we travel through it and experience things and add on to it. And we're friends here and we've moved over there and we're doing this for a time in our life. And now with that's branched over to here and it's very much like creating a painting as well if yeah. you're very process driven, which is really nice. So that's kind of a cool juxtaposition and also you know and allowing like allow that process in your painting as well because you've been doing it your whole life constantly evolving right yeah no I agree I think that 
the person that I am now, the the artist I am compared to what I was 13 years ago is completely different. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's amazing. Right. And it's it, what I bring to my work now is um, I don't know how to, it's not even experience. It's more, maybe it is a little bit of confidence that in my ability to just let it be, let it happen. Like it, it's not a forced thing. I don't have to worry about it anymore. Uh, Do you I don't, know, that changed for you because I remember struggling with myself and then I think it was somewhere around 2017 or 18 I shifted because I was trying to force something to happen and then something happened for me where I realized I was enjoying my materials and I started to sink into that rather than try to make something I allowed the experience to make not well kind of make me actually would did you notice a shift you know i think the biggest thing for me was um not being precious not knowing that i could do it again if i had to uh right. I, I i had this experience with i was working with jean peterson and she gave me an exercise this is like this must be seven years ago at least seven years ago um I had painted this large canvas. It was, I don't know, three by four or something. And I painted it and it was fantastic. And, and then she said, okay, now turn it upside down and paint it all over again. And I, <laughs> yeah. And it, uh, it, I, you know, it was like if somebody came over to your painting that was well on its way and just said, okay, now paint it all over again or put gesso all over it and start over. You'd, I freaked out. Yes. I mean, it was right. So I had this moment of like, really? Like, are you serious? And she's like, yeah, just do it again. And, and I did. So I did it. Uh, and one of the things I learned, very important thing I learned at that by d just doing the second layer was the layer, just doing that second layer in the revert, the history that was on that surface actually improved that second layer. It was incredible. Not, and then she came back and said, do it again. And I, wow. yeah, I didn't quite freak out at quite as bad, but it was so scary because you're, you just don't know when you're, when you don't have that confidence, you don't really know if you, you don't trust in your ability to do it again. Yeah. After that, like, and so of course I did it and I realized that the layers, that's what adds the depth. There was so much more to the surface. Of course I could do it again. Um, so I never really, I, I learned not to question my ability to trust myself that it might not be exactly the same, but you know what? It's probably going to be better. Yeah. Right. Um, and, and that's where I learned that the mistakes don't matter. They just add to the surface because all of that is part of that history that makes that whatever it is that I'm working on. So um, interesting. So, yeah. right. Um, yeah. You know, you when you mentioned that, it reminded me, this is different, but I, when I was in design school, I was just learning how to use a computer as well. And sometimes they would crash. And because I was learning yeah. to use the computer, I wouldn't remember to save all the time, you know, command, Z, uh, command <laughs> S, right? Yeah. And I remember one time doing this whole long, you know, presentation and the computer crashed and it was all gone and I was like sweating sweating but you know when I went back to do it again I did it like five times faster because I'd already gone through the experience the ideas putting them yeah. together and it was far more concise you know and it's very similar because it's a creative process it's an experience there's a trust like the first time that happened I was not happy okay absolutely yeah but it's it's about that uh experience of um you going through it because they're your ideas your hands your choices right yeah absolutely yeah and I think you know with anyone, I guess it depends. It depends on what you're doing. I mean, it depends on the medium you're working in, of course. So like if you, if you're working in watercolor, it's a, it would be a, right. It's a completely different thing. Yeah. Um, the, your approach and how you're using watercolors. I mean, that would be likely not something that would happen, you know, to, so you would, have, but 
equally. Like if you're work, and it depends on the kind of work, if you're doing high realism versus sort of an abstract, sure. end, right? So yeah. all of that's going to depend, make a difference on how the person approaches it. But just being comfortable and confident enough that if you make a mistake, it's okay. It's all part of the learning. And, and, and by doing that, um, you bring that to the next piece or the next thing that you do, right? It's, um, or the next time you go to your computer. Experience. Yeah, absolutely. You're being this. It's yes. not about the paint. It's about what you bring forward. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I yeah. know. I'm, I want to get on to your, um, let me just see the time here. Yeah, I want to make sure that we get to talk about your shows and how you organize that. And also, um, you, you've been in a few shows, both group and, um, I, I was looking at your website, so, okay. so <laughs> ideas of, um, the shows you've been in, but, uh, you did a group show just recently, wasn't yep. that Paul? But first, before you talk about that, any of the shows that you've done, was there any kind of trepidation about like, I don't know if I like, can I, or, cause I think this is important. Cause one of the things I wanted to touch on was showing up for you and showing your work to the world and first doing your art for you and always for you. But when you start showing it, there's, there's this wave that you're like, are they going to like it? And it still needs to be for you. So I, I, if you can talk to that yeah. when you're talking about these shows, but I think it's really important to show your work because it's self-validating that you are an artist, that you believe in yourself, that you get to be here and that others want to see you. I agree. I agree. Um, so when I first, at the very beginning, when I first started painting, uh, the instructor I had was wonderful. Her name, her name is Paula Henschel. She's a fantastic teacher, really high realism, paints water in watercolor, oils, acrylics, everything. So she had a show. And I mean, I'd never shown anything. And I was telling someone, I was talking about this the other day, because not that I would recommend this, but so I, she asked me to be in this show. And I mean, that it was a, I mean, it was a huge deal. And it was in a community hall here in Calgary. It was a big deal. My best friend came from Edmonton. She thought you wanted to be there. So I had one painting done and I had one that was half done. I said to Paul, I can't bring that. She says, no, bring it, bring it. The fact that I took a painting that was half finished to a show, but I was so nervous and I was so anxious. Like it felt like I, it was like walking across the stage in front of 3000 people. I mean, it was just so, um, I was so nervous and so afraid of what people were going to say. And yet I was so excited to be <gasps> actually doing it. Right. So that excitement that you get, like you're proud, but you're scared to death. Right. That That's you've actually, a great feeling. <laughs> right. Like it, it was just, it was terrifying, but it was wonderful at the same time. And then, and then you just kind of realize that, so that was a great show. I mean, it was, it was just wonderful to experience that. And then shortly after I did another, at, and I'm kind of talking about the very beginning. So, um, and I was doing high realism at that time. So I had done an art walk here and you'll, and this is going to happen. I'm sure for all artists, they experience positive um, affirmations for people. They come and they love your work and then people come and they don't get it or they don't I just lost you for a second. I can see you, but I can't hear you. There yeah, you go. Sorry. You're back. Yeah. My, uh, someone called in and I've like, Oh, sent, okay. I, I've sent. They're still trying to call. Give it, give them a second. There we go. So I, um, but I, so yeah, I was in a war, awkward art walk and I had a few, like a gentleman come and he's, and I can't remember what painting it was that he was looking, it was flowers or something and he didn't like it. And you know, that it was hard. Like it was, and I, you, you kind of have to accept that that's how someone's going to feel about your work. And I was actually, okay, I was okay with it. I kind of realized that it really wasn't about me or my work. It's about what that person, what they like. Um, and that's what really art is. So 
you want someone, if you're going to sell your work or show your, and I think it's important to show your work. I think it's, it validates what we do. It, it, it's a part of who we are. We create work to bring beautiful things into this world. I think, it, I think it's a necessary thing to be doing. Right. So I, I, and I think everyone can do art. Like, oh, I, yeah. I don't think, I don't think it's limited to certain people. Yeah. So yeah, I, I just was not put off by that. I just realized that, you know what, everyone's going to have their own opinion and it's okay. And um, I really actually wanted to know what it was about it that he didn't care for. And I, and it was such a long time. I, I don't really know. So I, I kind of didn't, I wasn't nervous for a long time. Then I went from painting florals to painting abstract. I'd never painted abstract before. This is just two years ago. So I had wow. never painted. Yeah. So that's wow. a new thing. Oh, that's huge. That's a big two thing. Years. Yeah. And you know, wow. I have people that, you know, have co collected work from me for um, quite a while. And, you know, and when you change uh, really quite that drastic. They think uh, you lost your marbles. <laughs> right. They do. It's kind of like nobody gets it. And uh, they're wondering what you're doing. Why is it? <laughs> yeah. And they're like, we love the work that you used to do and all of that. Right. But it's funny because I've taught. And so over the course, so showing that work for the first time was really scary. I wasn't sure how it would be received. I wasn't sure, you know, you, I questioned what, if I was even understood really what I was doing, if I was, you know, composing work properly because abstract pieces are completely different from painting florals you know um it's not uh i wasn't a technician any longer i was really using my intuitive being to create yeah. so when i started i started actually with the fca sending some pieces out to vancouver and you know gradually i got some i did get some recognition and i won some awards and things like that which really validated yeah okay you know what yeah, you know, you're doing this. And, and even at this, after painting for this many years, I still needed sort of to have that because you still are vulnerable. You still question yourself sometimes, yeah. right? It's new, right? So everything new is new. It's unknown. So you've got to sort of find your way into that as well. And that was my experience too. And I submitted to the FCA and they accepted my abstract. And I was like, oh my God. Yeah. Okay. I think I, I think I, you know, I get it. Not that, you know, what did I get? Like I got it there in that painting, but it is, it is something that, I mean, and you want to have that experience anyway, that uncertainty into, you know, I don't know if you go from uncertainty to certainty, but you can go from uncertainty into the confidence of enjoying the creation of what it is. Yeah. And that feels certain because you went through that and you enjoyed it and you let yourself get into it. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think too, you know, I think it's really important to be, um, to show your work. And, and if you're, if you're not sure where or how, or you're nervous to do it on your own, there's a lot of great organizations all over the world in all cities many most cities have them they have you know one or two different organizations and you know you can show with other artists and then you become this collective voice you have support from each other it gives you that confidence to get into that you know to, to start showing so you're not alone right so you don't feel so maybe exposed or vulnerable right yeah. um there's a it's a great way to start if you haven't shown your work before right to <laughs> just social media yeah. um, to, because the nice thing about that is that you know you're not there watching and somebody look you know their face or <gasps> what is it or what have you yeah and you you know we all go through this when we start sharing on social media and showing our work you're looking at how many people like and that doesn't mean that it's good or it's bad. And that was one thing I remember experiencing when I started to show my work and I was doing kind of expressive representational when I started my art journey here in the Okanagan. And it, the number of likes would be like something I really loved and then it only got like five likes or whatever. <laughs> and I thought, but I, 
you know, and so, but you learn, even though that doesn't feel good, you learn, you eventually see that doesn't equal me and it doesn't equal the value of the piece. And it, maybe the power went out on the, where they were looking, you know, like you don't actually know why it got X number of likes. And especially now with how everything's changing, but it's a really easy way to just start taking risks showing your work, see how it feels, talk to people about, you know, and also you get, you know, you do get the kudos and you do get the nice positive feedback. So it's a really nice way to tip your toe in. And then like you had suggested further with, you want to take it out into the, into yeah. the physical world. You know, yeah. you can go into shows where you get a little space or you can go into, you know, adding one painting. Because there's some, like here, that you just bring your paintings. Yeah. So you find your way, right? And and yeah. so tell us about this. Um, you did this sh group show where you met a number of artists from CVP that you, yeah? You want to talk yeah. about that? Yeah. So um, there were six of us. From, and we were all a CVP alumni, which is the Creative Visionary Program with Nicholas Wilton. I know that you did yeah. it and you've also talked about it as well. Yeah. Um, and Gloria Gal uh, Gallo, she actually was, she was the one that came up with the idea and she approached me about, I'm going to say like a year and a half, half, well, it has to be a year and a half wow. ago now. And we hadn't met before and she just invited me for coffee and she said, I have this idea. And she had already talked to, I think, a couple other girls. And we were all women. We didn't have any men in, that are in our area that we are aware of from CVP. So if there's any CVPers in the Calgary area, males, are, let us know. <laughs> yeah, let us know. Contact um, Nadine. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, yeah, she had this idea. She had already sort of put the feelers out and had this idea to bring a group show into some venues. And actually with COVID, it was really the, it was an amazing, amazing concept. And it was the perfect timing because people really, I think, want to do stuff and they want to get out and they want to be part of a community, but everyone's a little bit, you know, and now, you know, things are, people are worried again, very yeah. concerned, but in the, yeah. So, but in the fall, it was sort of, people were just looking for things to do, right? So we had five venues that agreed to participate and they were, we have a lot of micro breweries and distilleries and wineries here. We have one winery in, in uh, Calgary. And so they agreed to participate. So we went in and we hung, I think over, I think we had maybe 250 to 300 pieces or, and some lots of some small ones, but lots of large pieces. Between the six of you. Yeah, we had like two, 200 Phenomenal. pieces. Yeah, it was, it was, it was incredible, the art. The, it was, actually, it was really an amazing event to be a part of. And the artists were, the work was incredible. Uh, so we hung it, took us like almost five days to hang it. And we had it on this one day. It was a one day event. And we had, and I mean, someone was watching over us. It was 20 degrees out. And um, we had, it was set up, it was set up sort of as a walking tour. So you could walk the whole thing. Oh. So we had flags and signs. We had hundreds and hundreds of people. It was, and people came and they would have a cocktail or something to eat. We had food trucks come. So we had, um, all of us sort of participate. Gloria was sort of like, she was the girl that had the ideas and we just kind of, she assigned and we kind of were her little gophers ran around doing stuff, right? <laughs> And so, yeah, we had three food trucks and five venues and we couldn't, we're really not sure. We think we had well over 550 people actually signed because we had a draw at each location for a gift. Oh, wow. And so people signed, put, they put their name in for the draw and we didn't have any duplicates and most people came with someone. So we had about 550. So we think we could have been around a thousand people. That's amazing. It was like nothing we had, I'd never been a part of an, it was an event. It was an <laughs> art event. Um, more than an art show. People came to walk and look at art and come to the venue, maybe have a drink outside on the patio. Um, Cause we did have COVID restrictions. So everyone had to come in and show their vaccination records and yeah. things like that. 
Good. So safe. And, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, it was incredible. And then, um, so the group, so Gloria, we have this name. We're called the Abstracted Art Collective. And we did another we did like a wine night at the winery just a while ago. And we just did, there was a local producer show where they do artisans. So people that do um, jewelry or pottery or, and so the winery that we've been really in, involved in, he wanted to have the artist back. So we did all small pieces or matted pieces. So rather than large canvases, we did so small gifts, like things that people could buy for Christmas presents and stuff like that. So it's been really interesting. It, it's a different way of showing work. It's a lot, it was a lot of exposure mm -hmm. for all of us. Um, but it was, it was so much fun to be a part of. Like it all was more that. Yeah. And all was, that, you know, I'll bet that felt like such an achievement and and I don't mean like you made sales, et cetera. I mean like having the courage to do the work, to do the uh, approaching, to do the hanging, to all of that. And then, and here it is. And, and to do it with these other artists. I think that's amazing. Do, you know, emotionally, how is that for you? You know, it, um, it was, we didn't know what to expect. So again, it was a new thing. So we, yeah. we, because it wasn't a typical art show. So we weren't, um, and we were in a, in a, the, the, the area that we were in were all of these locations where it was more of an industrial area. So it's not a walk by. So we went in, it was a lot of preparation and you're really uncertain, like who's oh, going to come. You're hoping then, right? Right not a proven thing right right and we were kind of like we were very nervous at, like who would show up so we had artists in each location we but you just didn't know and we couldn't people were lined up out the door like we had to people had to wait because they had we were only allowed so no it was it was just unbelievable so we wow that's we, all of us felt this huge sense of accomplishment, I think, and so proud that it came off. It was done so professionally. Everything that um, Gloria's vision came off without a hitch. It was just fantastic. And, and I think all of the artists that were involved were super proud to be a part of an event that was that good. You yeah. Know? Oh, that's amazing. And I was just thinking like, you know, I, I was skimming your website. So I see, I've seen the kinds of shows and group shows and submissions and all these, sorry, and, the, and, and it's a journey yes. and, and it would have started here and then it's here and here and now it's like this. And so, and each accomplishment, don't you find if, especially if it's a bit edgy feeling that once you've gone through it, you almost feel like, well, heck, I mean, I can do, I can do this. I can do, I can. Who knows what I can do? Absolutely. And that's a free gift from just taking a risk. That's a freebie. Yeah, I agree with you. I think that you, um, the things that hold us back are just these, uh, they're not real, actually. They're just these made up ideas we have in our heads. And the minute that we step, step out and just allow ourselves, to, you know, to push ourselves outside our bound comfort zones. Right. Yeah. It's anything is possible. It, yeah. It's just, and, and there's no fear, like, cause what is the worst thing that could happen? So nobody comes, you know, you, and you, you get to this, you don't feel good, but you can recover from your feelings. Yeah, absolutely. Like, just another story that you said, I mean, the, you know, yeah, 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 I agree. So, yeah, I think, uh, I mean, and you're right. Every time I've done something that's just a, that's little different, little outside the comfort zone. Um, I'm super excited afterwards that, you know, and usually regardless of whether, you know, it isn't about the sales and that's the other thing. It's never about the sales for me. Really. No, no. You know, um, there Those are prize bonuses as far as I'm concerned. A hundred percent. Right. It It's, those are just, that's wonderful that someone loves my work as much as I do, that they're willing to take it home and hang it in their house. I love that. Uh, I appreciate that for sure. Um, but yeah, 
being out there and having people actually talk about my work and it, and and really seeing it it's and that's the other thing it isn't about the sales so so by putting yourself out there you get to talk to and meet people and they look at your work and they see things in your work that the things that excite you and you're just almost in awe like you know it cuz then you realize that it's there like like you it's not just you right someone yeah. else has this appreciation yeah yeah yeah, yeah they, they, ha they appreciate the same things that you do, you know, so it, it's so much fun to share that with people, right? Yeah. You know? And other artists, like it was, it's, it's great. This has been great. Like, I know it's been great. It's been like 45 minutes. I'm just going to see if I can see on my iPad, if there are any questions. I'm not quite sure. Let me just see if I can see that okay. or maybe here. I mean, there's been lots of people popping in and waving and saying hi and, um, if anybody has, you know, I think there's this question button. So I think that's what people can do if they do oh, yeah. have a question for either of us. I don't see any. So I'm just scrolling right now. Okay. Lots of people just coming in and waving and saying hi and sending hi. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. That's so nice. We've had a nice crowd of people coming through. Just, that's good. Uh, and, you know, this is going to be recorded so you can come back and listen if you had to go for lunch, which I think is past your lunchtime now, too. That's isn't okay. I, it has been super fun chatting with you, and I'd love to do it again sometime if you'd like. Yeah, anytime, Pauline. I'd love to. Mm. This was my first live. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Not so, <laughs> yeah. So thank you very much for that. It's, uh, it's been great. You know, you and I have been connected, but we haven't actually connect, like we've been talking for a while, but behind the scenes, right? So this was yeah. really, this is really wonderful. Yeah, I know. And you guys, like, I didn't send her a list of questions. I did warn her. I was probably <laughs> her to share something that you can't see on her website. I did tell her that. So I didn't have to ask her that, but everything else, we've just been flying by the seat of our pants yeah. Um, taking a risk, hoping it's our is fun and jiving, and it's been really lovely. So thank you for taking the time, Nadine, and everybody as well for popping in. Oh, I have a question here. Oh, I get to hit the little question button. <laughs> um, Becky says, what's your name again? So that's Nadine Johnson. And then Rena says, is Nadine part of an established gallery? That's what Rena wants to know. I am in um, a little gallery here in Calgary called Arts A Key, um, spelt A-Q-U-I. And she is, the woman that owns it is fantastic. She's from South Africa. She's been in Canada a long time, but she wow. always wanted to own a gallery. She's very artistic herself and does, all, she does pottery and all kinds of things. But her, she has a very eclectic love appreciation of all kinds of art so her space is potters and jewelers and uh, painters um, the, she's got metal workers it's really a beautiful little space and she also uh, she has some established artists and she also gives opportunities to you know up-and-coming artists like so new artists that are just trying to see if they you know if they can make a living at it I'm um, sorry, I got, uh, I'm just trying to get the that's name okay. off your face, so I hope that's not in the video. Um, uh, Nadine, I don't know if it's okay to ask, but do you have an agreement with her? I know there's a gallery here that you sort of have to pay to hang, so do you, is it okay to share uh, how your agreement is? Yeah, we just, um, I'm with her, like I have a year contract, you know, okay. but I don't think and if I remember correctly that I've been with her a little over a year now, she, it's more of a gentleman's contract. Right. Um, so respectfully, like if work is there, I don't sell it anywhere else. Um, yeah, of even if, and if it's on my site, it's listed that it's at her, at the gallery yeah. there. Yeah. Um, it's important to make sure that you don't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And um, I'm trying to think of what else would be, I mean, I pay a commission or to her if she sells my work, but it's not a, it's not a vanity gallery. So I didn't pay to be in the gallery. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a lot of opportunities out there and there are quite a few van vanity galleries popping up. Mm -hmm. So I know that that, you know, and a lot of people, a lot of times I get approached through my Instagram 
Yeah. Um, me too. Yeah. Right. Um, but I think that there's um, there's enough opportunity out there for people, and there's enough galleries out there that they don't really have to pay yeah. to show their work. I think you know. Um, yeah. But it really it, for each individual, you'll have to make that that choice, right? Yeah, it's true. I do know an artist here who uh, did bring work to New York, and I think she had to pay to, and she said you know while it was really exciting at first and everything it was a lot of work high cost and you know when you have to pay to do that plus you're going to be paying commission you just went away. oh there you are there. um there you yeah go. so yeah I, it, that's not something that i want to do is because i'm already showing online and i i would rather be part of um a collaborative type of um situation than to be buying a spot to show and then i'm sure you have to pay commission too like we all we all, we certainly want our galleries to thrive that's why you pay them a commission because they're helping you and you're helping them right absolutely yeah absolutely they have to cover their costs um you know they pay all the same things we, like insurance and you know rent and utilities and staffing and you know they pay for advertising it's it does so i'm happy to pay my commission absolutely. um you know but i don't want to have to pay a fee and then a commission on top of that you know yeah. i think there's opportunities out there for me to show my work whether it's through my website or online through social media um, which has been really positive for me too. Uh, yeah. It's been an amazing experience. I have wonderful followers and uh, I've had some success as well, quite a lot of success showing my work on social media, which is a great platform. And and for anyone out there that's maybe, think, maybe nervous about starting to post your work, you know what? It's always usually very positive. Yeah. I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't recall really ever having a negative comment. People, the people that are going to be out there, you know, looking at art, they, they're kind, usually people are kind and, you know, generous with their, with their comments. So I, I wouldn't be afraid of that. I would just, you know, go for it. it it's yeah, a great I, place to start. I mean, I've had a couple of comments and I just like, I mean, I remember thinking, wow, I am shocked you really took the time to write, you know, um, <laughs> nasty. Uh, yeah, guess what? You get to delete. So like, it's just, a, and, and really it's just not my problem. Yeah. Not my problem. If you don't, you don't have to look at my stuff. If you don't, <laughs> I, I, I didn't agree. hold your head to the, you know, um, <laughs> I want to make sure that um, I don't keep you too long. And also, I think that it records beyond an hour, but I'm not 100% sure. And I do want this to stay recorded. So I am going to wrap it up okay. uh, before my time gets too close and I start sweating here. Uh, <laughs> but I really have enjoyed chatting with you. I didn't expect that we chat so long, but why stop a good thing? Um, yeah. But thanks so much for taking the time and being so generous with you're sharing and sharing, um, you know, your truth and some of your vulnerabilities and, and your successes as well. Cause I think that we all need to hear that. Um, we all need to know that, you know, it's a doable thing just step by step. Right. Yes, I agree. I agree. Thank you for having me. Um, it was a great first live, so I appreciate it. Awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah. I can't believe it's been almost an hour. It went really fast. So, yeah. So thank you everyone for coming. Um, you know, it, it's, we appreciate having you. Yeah, we do. What, where would we be without our followers here? So thank you everybody for popping yeah. in. Thank you again, Nadine, and I'll see you again soon. Yes. Thanks, Pauline. Take okay, care. Take care. Bye everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye Nadine.